Our next presenter is going to be Professor Lloyd Trotman, who is going to discuss the next generation platform to cure metastatic prostate cancer with a technology that I think is applicable more broadly even than that. So, uh, thank you for the invitation. So, I hope you'll see some of what's um, on these slides and I'll uh, try to read and uh, show it just to you. So, my name is Lloyd Trotman. I was just introduced. I've been a faculty at uh, Colston Harbor since 2007. Uh, before that, I've been um, working for about six years at Sloan Kettering uh, Cancer Center, and um, my focus is prostate cancer. With me here are uh, other members of the team. The technology that um, I'm talking to you about is uh, very complicated, and we've developed it. Uh, our uh, chief developer here is uh, uh, Jin. Uh, Tully manages trials because we're in the business of doing trials. And David is also here. He's actually um, uh, one of the initiators uh, of our business enterprise club. So what is the problem um, that we're facing? Um, prostate cancer um, kills some 30,000 men in the US alone every year. And there is no therapy against metastatic disease. Um, one of the major reasons we think that there is no therapy against metastasis is because there are no models to cure the disease. So um, scientists, pharma, they can't do proper experiments. Why can't we do proper experiments? The problem is that there are only three animal, animals that we know of that actually get this disease. It's us. Um, and we can't do uh, experiments on people. And there are um, dogs that also naturally get metastatic prostate cancer. And the experiments that were done in the dogs um, in the 1930s actually led to the realization that the, the disease is hormone dependent. So hormone therapy was discovered in drugs. That's what's saving lives today. That was discovered 80 years ago. There's a third model. Or th that model actually was used, but it is way too expensive to use in today's environment. Um, there's a third model that nobody's ever suggested using. It's the, other, the only other animal that gets prostate cancer, which is lions. And, um, they're not so popular in the research. <laughs> so what's our solution, right? Um, it would be an interesting grant to write, though, uh, for the NIH. <laughs> but um, our solution is to take the most readily available and most studied uh, animal system, which is mouse. And uh, we've developed technology that for the first time allows us to switch the prostate cells in a mouse that are normal into cancer cells. And beyond that, we can actually make these cells glow, which allows us for the first time to see how the disease evolves. And I want to show you what that looks like. So this is a mouse. Uh -huh. This is a mouse. Uh, that's, that's lying on its back. Are there some uh, controls here? Lights? Yeah. Okay. So this is a mouse lying on its back. Okay. Um, it's lying on its back um, before we trigger the disease. In the next slide, what you'll see here is this uh, bright yellow spot. That's the lights that we put in um, uh, to those cells of the mouse prostate that are actually cancerous. So you see the disease is starting. After a week or two, uh, what we see is that the disease is no longer confined down here to the prostate, but it actually starts to go up. Um, this is liver. So we have metastasis. And after a few weeks more, we don't just have uh, metastasis to liver, but also other organs that are more distant. And at this point, we decide to give therapy, and the only therapy that we know works, um, that also works in humans, which is castration therapy. And what you see, we completely, we completely erase the disease. And that's a spectacular success, and that's what uh, humans bank on today. However, invariably, this disease comes back. And it doesn't just come back, but it comes back at a higher speed, and more aggressively, which leads to relapse and ultimately death of the animal. So this is the sad state, uh, today's state, of prostate cancer therapy. And that's why 30,000 men die in the US every year. However, we've now created an exact replica of this. So what do we do with it? Um, so this is the time course of that mouse. What do we do? We um, propose to um, test drugs and combinations in this model in order to find out which drugs actually work. And that should help uh, pharma uh, a big deal. The second, oops, the second thing that we're doing is we're testing resistance because we can define the genetics 
of resistant cells, we can find out what, it, uh, what is behind the disease coming back. And so we, we're actually doing three things. We're offering three services. One is, will a drug work? Second one is, when would a drug work? Would it work early on or late? And the third one is, who is a drug for? So the market size for a prostate cancer therapy is um, uh, estimated at about four billion in 2011, and it's estimated to go up um, uh, twice or even more in the next 10 years. Um, in parallel, uh, contract research uh, of the type that we're proposing um, is uh, right now at one to two billion, and it's uh, going up and growing uh, together with the market for the drugs. So. <clears throat> Why is this rapidly expanding? Well, I told you 80 years ago, uh, uh, hormone, dis uh, hormone therapy was discovered. Now, for the first time, there's, uh, there's mainly three companies that are about to shake up this business. Um, Johnson & Johnson, Aragon has a new drug, and Medivation have, for the first time, offered drugs that offer real life-extending therapies when the disease comes back after castration. Now, Medivation is a, a poster child. They started their trials uh, a few years ago and uh, got FDA approval, and obviously a lot of money. So what did they do? They went on to start eight new trials in all of those different settings. So they're indicated down here, a phase one, two trial, they have all these different names. And these eight trials come at about 100 million each. So that's about a billion dollar that you're looking at just because a drug has started to work once. So that gives you an idea of the, of the, um, uh, the enthusiasm and the money also that needs to be spent for all of this. Now, our idea is to come in and test these existing or new drugs in that model so a company can focus on the exact stage when we expect it to be working best. Um, what are we working up against? So our model is working against the, the standard uh, model in pharma, which is a transplant-based model. And what's the difference? So this is a feature chart. Um, what you should take home is um, metastasis. The transplant model, the transplant mouse, does not do metastasis. Um, you're injecting foreign human cells into the mouse. These may float around in the body, but it's not metastasis. So our model does. There's a check mark here for our model, okay? <laughs> the immune system. Um, the transplant mouse does not have an immune system uh, because it has to be able um, uh, to support the growth of human cells, uh, which you can't do if, if your immunity is intact. But now we know that immunity is a major component of drug response or uh, treatment um, uh, failure. So our model has intact immune response because it's just a mouse. The tumor environment um, obviously in the transplant model is foreign. Um, it's got nothing to do with the mouse because uh, it's, it's human cells that are in, in a immune deficient environment. Our model has a complete uh, native tumor environment and architecture and that is critical because the highways and the vessels that lead into um, uh, the tumor are exactly the paths that drugs are taking to either work or not. So that has to be mimicked faithfully. So our technology, um, our technology is set to um, reduce development costs and time to market and increase the chances for FDA approval because we define which kind of patient um, a drug should be tested on. So all the 80% where it doesn't work is going to be eliminated and uh, this allows a drug to uh, perform at its best. And um, obviously it also eliminates um, this information that comes from transplant models. So the market is about four, uh, uh, drug to market costs are about four to 11 billion and the biggest cost in that market is drug failure. And 90% of them actually fail. So if we can just increase uh, uh, the success rate from 10 to 20%, that saves the company $1 billion. We are proposing to work uh, on prostate cancer um, uh, in a CRO model. That's uh, the major uh, uh, idea. Perhaps uh, also in a CRO uh, plus royalty model. Um, we're now in the face of getting customers, uh, incorporating and raising money. Um, uh, down here you see some numbers uh, that we can talk about perhaps in the Q&A about um, our uh, revenue potential. Who do we work with? Who wants our technology? So uh, we have Sloan Kettering, um, Cornell uh, Medical School, uh, Harvard Medical School and the Dana-Farber Center in Boston that are currently doing trials with us because they are excited about our, our technology and we've been funded by um, uh, the National Cancer Institute, NIH, the DOD, um, and uh, also private foundations. But what I wanted to mention 
um, especially is that it all got started. The first person walking into the door, looking at the data and writing a check is actually sitting in the room that Sandy came from cruising for the cure of Long Island. So we started locally and we also expect to grow locally first. Thank you for your attention. Now. Absolutely. So, um, absolutely, because that, that's where our, our expertise is. So the focus is there, um, but um, we also started to secretly kind of develop um, other models and see if it's a, uh, where it's applicable and not. So, in principle, we know of, we know of one additional tumor type that we can also mimic. Um, I have a great example for that. There's um, about two years ago a new drug was described that um, uh, was supposed to, or that was shown to work in leukemia um, uh, and was also uh, worked on at Cold Spring Harbor actually. The first thing people did because it was clear that the oncogene that it targets is very important in prostate cancer as well. So uh, at Sloan Kettering, in collaboration with Sloan Kettering, some people started, actually with Charles Sawyer, started to look if with the current models for prostate cancer that drug works um, and that's the transplant models and the, the answer was very clear no so if you read any review today the, 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 the dogma is this drug will work in in uh, tumors of the blood but not in solid tumors so in collaboration with the inventor of the drug we took it into our model and guess what it works and this kind of disinformation I think that is misleading a company to abandon a drug and a whole market is what our model can solve. So that's why we think we really have a chance to, to disrupt the existing technology. Okay. Any other questions? So, what's, uh, so I saw the numbers, a million five, one point two million out there, that sort of thing looks like that was you put the capital piece. Yes. So uh, uh, what's the proceeds for the next million? Um, so, uh, infrastructure, we need some of the infrastructure, and um, as you saw, the technology, I mean, many people have been working on this, and we're the only ones that solved it. So, uh, it's an in-house technology, essentially, and we need to train people to, to be able to do that, and so we need to train more staffers so we can um, uh, run through a you know, high number of experiments. So that's, that's the major, uh, I think that's the major uh, uh, investment that we have. In terms, of, um, in terms of the technology, imaging technology, it's pretty much standard, standard uh, uh, equipment. But getting people, getting people trained and having the specialized expertise on site, that's the, that's the major uh, avenue, I think, for expansion. Yes. So we're filing IP. Um, uh, uh, the, I think, though, um, there's, a, uh, there's a component in there that is essentially magic sauce approach. Um, because um, what we've, as I said, we, it took us, um, we started this in 2009, so it took us four years to develop the technology. Um, a lot of this is how we do things and how we learn. Exactly, methods, um, how to do that, and the specifics of how we combine what we've done with other technologies that are coming up at Cold Spring Harbor. RNAi technology is one, and the other one obviously is uh, uh, sequencing. Uh, Cold Spring Harbor is a hotspot for sequencing. As I told you, if we know the genes that make the disease resistant, right, and we have a patient where we see from the get-go that gene is on, don't give him that drug. It's just going to dilute your sample, your trial effect, and that kind of information is critical. So sequencing is important. You know, it's most. I mean, I've said this before. Is uh, most trials fail not so much uh, the 
drug failing the patient, the patient failing the drug. Exactly. It's not the wrong patient. Exactly. So that matchup, that matchup is one of our uh, key informations that we want to provide.